Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, last episode we looked at making our player move and giving them some animations. So now we have them able to move around in the world. You can move in all different directions and up and down and all over the place, just the way we want them to. So now we want to make sure that the camera can actually follow them uh, throughout the world. And the way we're going to do this is kind of make the camera follow a little bit behind the player, because there's a, a there's a simple way to do this. Um, to make the camera follow the player, which is a straightforward way of literally just uh, We'll just stop playing the game here. Literally just if we grab the camera and drag it on top of the player What that'll do is make the camera a child of the player and it'll make <clears throat> the camera Directly follow the players movements, which is a simple and straightforward way to do it It works perfectly fine if you if you decide that that's how you'd like your game to behave No problems with that at all uh, the only problem is, as you can see, our player started off kind of a little bit to the left and a little bit above the center. So now our player stays in that position up there. We can move, we can move the camera around by adjusting different values and stuff like that if we wanted to, of course. But it's a little bit of an awkward way to do it. And if we want the camera to go and follow something else. It's a much a very awkward process to make that no longer a child of the player and then make it a child of something else while the game is already running. So a much better way to do it is just to create a script that will tell the camera to follow the player around in the world and make it nice and simple. Um, so that's fine. But the, one of the other problems that we have is as we're walking around here we can see all these lines kind of jittering and jumbling around all over the place when we're standing still it's it's okay it's really it's annoying still obviously having these lines here but as soon as we start moving it gets really bad and that's not what we want happening at all so the first thing we're going to do is fix up those lines here and then we're going to create a script to make the camera follow the player so i'm going to make this no longer child by dragging it away above the player like that and we want to get rid of these lines here so if we go to edit and then the project settings and then quality here we get a whole lot of options over here you can always mess around with all these and they'll have different effects if you want to but all we're concerned with at the moment is we have our different levels here and we've got on our beautiful and fantastic level uh, these are just things that are set up by default within unity they're mostly applied when you're making uh, 3d games it'll give like different texture grades and stuff like that it's not something we're going to really be too concerned with making a 2d sprite based game as we are but what we want to do on both of these settings is under anti-aliasing here we currently has 2x multi sampling we want to change that to disabled and you can see it immediately gets rid of all those lines and we need to do the same on fantastic as well because if you have either one of those activated it, it brings the lines back so we'll disable that there so we can see we've got rid of our lines so that's looking good so far but if we again make the camera a child of the player and hit play most of those lines are now gone which is exactly what we wanted but if we start moving uh, okay nothing's showing up there let's make this bigger maximize that we can see the odd line kind of suddenly jump and sputter into appearing in the world and obviously again that's not what we want to happen it just it looks bad it doesn't help our, our world feel like a solid thing um, so there's one more thing we can do to fix that so we'll un, un main, uh, unchild the camera from the player again and what we need to do is if we go to our ground objects here and drop them down and we'll just select the first one you can see it's got a sprite that tells it what it looks like it's got a color we haven't messed with that but you can actually mess around with the color here and you could make it a, give it a different tint if you wanted to and stuff like that uh, depending on what the sprite is it'll have different kind of coloring effects but we want to leave it at just straight up white uh, but what we're actually interested in this section is the material so if we click on material here material is applied uh, and it basically controls how um, any particular object is displayed on the screen so at the moment by default, any sprites you use, any like 2D uh, uh, images like that are brought in as default sprites so that they're all nicely looking the same color. If we were to change it to, say, default diffuse here, 
it immediately goes really dark and the reason it does that is is because it requires a light in the world to light it up um so it's actually visible and it the same with different bits and pieces here they all have different uh, kind of ways they work but we're not too worried about them we have our sprites default and that's what makes our sprites look normal but there's one setting within sprites default that we want to be able to change but we can't change the one that's given automatically we have to create ourselves a new material that we're going to make it that, that we'll be able to control and make sure that we can get rid of those horrible lines so to do that we're going to go to back, back to our assets folder and we're going to create a new folder here and we're going to call this materials like that and then uh, we go we'll go into that folder no that's the wrong one we go into materials folder and then we're going to right click and create a material here and we're going to call this sprite dash pixel snap is what we're going to call that and you're going to see why now in a second oh not sprite sprite if I could spell things properly that would also be very helpful so we have a whole lot of settings over here that we don't need to worry about at all. What we do need to worry about is if we go to shader here and click on that, we're going to go down to sprites and then default. And you'll remember that was the name of the material that was automatically applied to our objects. So we're going to click on that. So by default, this is the exact same thing that is applied whenever we drag any object into the world. But we also have an option here called pixel snap. And we want to turn that on. And that's the thing that will make sure that are, there's no lines appearing in the world because what it'll try and do is it'll make sure that any uh, pixel within our sprite basically takes up a full uh, square in the world so that if two of them are touching against each other they should exactly snap to the line and not leave any gaps in between so we need to apply that to all our ground textures here and what we'll do is click on the first one scroll down to the bottom hold shift and click on the last one so that we can select them all like that and then literally just grab our sprite pixels click and drag it onto our material slot here and we get a sprite pixel snap and now if we play the game and we'll make our camera a child again it's probably better to do it while we're in the game itself so that it won't stay afterwards so we'll do it like that we'll make and maximize again and now walking left and right you can see there's no lines sputtering and appearing into the world that we wouldn't want to have there at all so we've got rid of all those horrible lines and now we can actually move on to controlling our camera so like I said we have that basic way of controlling the camera but what we're going to do is create a new script to control our camera so much like we have a script for controlling our player called player controller we're going to create a new C sharp script and call this camera controller like that and then we're going to open that up um, and obviously to start off with we're going to need a couple of basic things um, like I said we want to be able to make sure that our camera can follow different objects in the world we want to start, to start off following the player but we want to make it follow other game objects maybe if we're doing like a little cutscene we want to uh, make the camera focus on like a treasure chest that gets unlocked or something like that so what so rather than just uh, making it follow to a, a player controller object we're just going to use a generic game object so we'll just say here public game object follow target and that'll just be the object that we use to follow target so we're just going to save this We'll just convert them if you need to save it pop back into unity and on our main camera we're going to give it that component once it compiles down here in the corner okay we're going to type in camera there we go we got our camera controller and we can see we've got a space here for our follow target and we're going to make that our player and because we've chosen to be just a game object we can make that be absolutely anything so we can make it follow the ground we can make it follow an individual one in particular but we want to make it follow the player okay um, now that we know what object we want to follow we're going to need um, a position for that object within the world to aim towards so we're going to say private vector tree target 
position. Now, we could literally just use the, the transform position of the player. So here we can see we got our X, Y, and Z position of the player, and we could use that as the target for our camera uh, to move towards. But the problem is the Z value of our player is zero, and the Z value of our camera is minus 10. Um, basically the reason we don't want to make the main camera's Z value go to zero is because if we make this zero like that, everything in our world will disappear because the camera is on, on the exact same space within the world as the player. So it doesn't know where to see the player because it can't, it just can't see anything. So we need to leave that at minus 10. So that's why we want to use a new, a new vector tree of target position because we want to leave the Z value the way it is but get the X and the Y value from our follow target. And then finally, we need one more value and it's going to be a float value. And this is going to be how fast the camera will chase after the player, basically. So we'll say public float move speed. So that's the, the three basic things that we need there. And um, so obviously we need a little bit of a few lines of code to be able to actually do anything. So we go down to our update loop here um, and like I said we need to get the X and the Y value from the follow target without changing the Z value of the camera so we will say here our target position is equal to new vector tree because this is how you set the X Y and Z values of a vector uh, so new vector tree and then bracket uh, and so the X value will be on our follow target the transform from that dot position dot x so that's the x value of the of where the player is in the world um, and then our follow target dot transform dot position dot y for the y value and like I said we want to make sure that our z value remains the same so we'll just rather than using the follow tra target transform position we'll just use our regular transform dot position dot z and that should be a small t not a capital t um so yeah we want the we just want to use the transform dot position dot z and that's just the one that's by default attached to the same scripts or to, attached to the same object that our camera controller scripts will be attached to which obviously is the camera uh, so we close that bracket and put our semicolons so now that we have a target to move towards we need to move our camera to that position and where we do that is obviously we need to change the transform dot position and what we're going to use is a thing called vector tree dot lerp so we don't say new vector tree we just say vector tree dot lerp and put a bracket and you can see we get a couple of little things here as soon as we put our bracket in we've got a vector tree a vector tree b and a float t uh, so basically all this means is our vector tree A is where we currently are. So that'll just be our current camera transformed that position. Our vector tree B is where we want to be. So that'll be uh, where our camera, um, no, not a camera, sorry. That'll be where our player is. And finally we have a float T and a float T is amount, is essentially the amount of um, movement that the camera can have in any particular uh, frame of our update so every update loop we'll only be able to move a certain amount and obviously that's going to be controlled by our move speed so in our first section here we're going to put in like I said this is where we're starting from so that's our current transform dot position where we want to go to which is our target position oh if I could spell that right target position and finally how much movement we want which will be our move speed and much like we did when we were moving our player around the world, we want to multiply that by time dot delta time. And close our bracket and put our semicolons. And we want to multiply that by time dot delta time because we want it to be consistent. And like I said before, if you're uh, using different frame rates, we want it to be a different amount. So if we're using 60 frames a second, you want that number to be smaller so the camera can move smaller little bits. And if you're moving at 30 frames a second, you want it to be slightly larger. So we'll save that 
And that's all we need. Just those two simple little lines of code. That's all we need to make a camera follow along behind our player. So we'll just wait for this to compile down here. And we'll obviously need to give it some kind of move speed. So if we just leave it at zero for the moment, and if we hit play, obviously nothing will happen. Our camera will just stay frozen in position just like the way it is, which is handy to know in case we want to freeze our camera in position for any particular uh, rooms or anything like that. Uh, that, like if you have if you enter a building and you're in a room that will only take up one screen we'll know that okay we don't need the camera to move then uh, but we're gonna give it some move speed now so hit five and that will automatically make the camera move to be centered over the player and if we move him now we can see he moves to the side but the camera doesn't quite it's not just following exactly where he is but if we, we can move around, we have a little bit of freedom and it makes the camera feel just a little bit more alive. If we move off to the side here like this, but you can see the camera doesn't, um, it falls a certain amount behind the player and then it stops uh, losing track of him. So if we like hold to the right here and just use the mouse uh, cursor as a guide, I'm just gonna leave that alone there. You can see the player isn't moving any further over to the right um, in terms of where he is in the screen. Obviously in the world he is, but he's he's still walking to the right, but the camera isn't falling too far behind. Uh, and we can see if we change our move speed, so we'll set this down to one. Now we'll have the camera, the player is able to move much, much further over to the left or to the edge of the screen or wherever. Um, but again, it reaches a point where the camera is only so far behind the player and it won't fall any further behind than that. And you end up with these kind of like smooth camera movements going on. This is probably a little bit too slow. Uh, it kind of makes the camera feel a little bit like it's asleep. Uh, but I think five is a good balance. But if we change this to say 100, what you'll end up with is the camera trying to follow way too closely to the player and it kind of jitters ahead of the player because it, uh, our move speed is so fast that it's moving the camera actually past the player and then it has to move back to overcompensate. So you end up with this kind of jittery jumbling around kind of stuff. So we're gonna leave this on five, which I think is a relatively stable value to be able to use for the player. Um, but there you go. That's how we can have a nice and simple little uh, camera controller on our camera to make it follow the player and make it have a little bit of sense within the world. So next time out, we're getting a little bit bored of just having this one little patch of green grass here. So next time out, we're gonna look at adding, uh, or, or not adding, creating maps to be used in our game. And we're gonna use a, an external tool called Tiled, which is really helpful and really handy, um, so that you can literally just draw your maps and you don't have to go and drag every single one of these little uh, blocks into the world and line it up perfectly. It's, it'll, it's a tool that'll do it all for you and make it nice and simple. So we're gonna use that in the next episode. Uh, but for now, we've got our camera working and our player moving around in the world. So thanks for watching everybody, and I'll be back soon with more map-making goodness in an RPG adventure. Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.